All right, all right. Happy New Year, guys. Welcome back to the Expansion Pack Podcast, where we download this week's content and we bring it to you. Once again, I am your host, Danzel, a.k.a. Black Ice 8, joined by my amazing co-host, starting off with Manny, a.k.a. Goop Master Flex. Ready to know, New Year, same goop. <laughs> and, of course, we also have Chris, a.k.a. May 25th. Yeah. We're back. Right. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> we we've missed you guys. We missed you guys. You know, we've uh taken a little break for the holidays, but now we're back to talk about 2021. Thank God 2020 is over and done with. Uh how you guys feeling? How was your uh how was your holidays, guys? Man, I'm getting ready for 2020 part two, you know what I'm saying? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, take that energy no. out. Yeah, that Get this that man really out! Negative, <laughs> wow. I mess with you, you know. That's I'm tough. excited. You know what I'm saying? It's pretty negative, bro. I pretty mean, negative. you know, I was just chilling, basically home. You know what I'm saying? I had a couple days off, so. But other than that, went back to work from my, you know, Corona hiatus. But yeah, <laughs> okay. So Glad you're good and healthy, and you're alive and well, Goop. You know exactly, what I'm exactly. That's the positivity. Yeah. Chris, what about you, man? Um, you know, I'm, I, um, you know, I'm happy 2020 is over. I'm happy we're moving forward. Uh, you know, and now that the whole hustle and bustle of the holiday season has come and gone, maybe your boy could finally get him an Xbox. That'd be <laughs> nice. That'd be real nice. You know what I'm saying? I, all these little kids and your little Jimmy's and little Timmy and you need an Xbox and you need to play... Y'all's had got y'all stuff now. Let me come through and just come on now. Come on, yeah, that's all guys. Which is which is five cents a day. <laughs> you can help this poor young man get a new Xbox Series X. <laughs> that five cents a day. <laughs> oh God! All right. Hashtag bro, we can't Chris an Xbox. Music, bro. I just you definitely getting your Xbox this year. <laughs> all right all right so <laughs> enough messing around guys <laughs> let's uh let's get into let's get into this week's content here you know it, it's light on the news so really what we're looking at is uh you know getting ready for 2021 looking forward to all the the good stuff that that hopefully the new year should bring to us um so you know chris i'm gonna let you start off with your usual icebreaker so what do you got for us this week Nah. What games that were delayed in 2020 that you're waiting for to actually come out this year? Now that 2021 is here. Okay. You know, I like Go that ahead, Goop. because <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can expect this, and you know, what I'm saying it's like because there's like a lot of games, obviously, that was like. But delayed that we all know and sadly have to deal with. But actually, this is more of like a recent, but I was actually into that uh, recent uh, PlayStation exclusive Destruction All-Stars that got pushed back into February. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Like, I, I, you know, I, being the only PlayStation user here is like, you know, I, I need more oh, exclusives. Whoa, so. Whoa. Oh, oh. I know. <laughs> what? You're definitely not the only the place that she here. But go ahead. <laughs> the disrespect. You're the only one here with a PS5. You are definitely not the right only PlayStation now, user here. I don't even got nothing next gen, fam. <laughs> Come on, man. I, we all have PlayStations. Don't don't, don't, don't play. PlayStation 5 user. I'm sorry. I didn't. You know. I'm saying. I, we, or we know for the Xbox. So I didn't know you guys actually rock your PlayStation like that. But We're gamers, bro. <laughs> Boxes, but yeah, right. I'm exci- I'm actually excited for Destruction All Stars though. You know, looking into the game is like you know, it's, it's supposedly going to be free to play on uh, when it comes out, which is you know another reason why I'm excited for it. You know, free is the best when you know when games are nowadays seventy dollars. Like, so 
I will, uh, when it's free, those microtransactions, though, I'm just just throwing that out there. You know, but those I'm are cool options. Yeah, I'm cool. <laughs> they with that. are. They are. I, they are. But I'm just saying they get their money somehow. Oh, yeah, they do. That's all I'm saying. I'm fine with those. I want more of those. That way I can just (laughs) look at those microtransactions, look at that that skin, and be like, oh, that looks cool. Eh." Just keep on playing. (laughs) Cool with me. Yeah, like, but I'm just excited because Destruction also just, you know, reminds me of, like, a more, like, uh, a current day Twisted Metal type of thing. Because, you know, Twisted Metal was the... Shizn it back in I've the day. I've been days. waiting for a remaster of that for a while, bro. So, like, you know, this could be like one of those modern day twisted metal kind of games that, you know, that we, you know, PlayStation just shoots out for us. So I'm excited to see, you know, if it's something like that for us. Okay. If it's like that, I'm, I might be in a boat with them. If it's like just the middle, yeah, yeah, ooh, that was a good series, man. I don't know where that went, but you know what yeah. though? I feel like I don't remember what year it was that they remade Twisted Metal, but I went back and played it, and it didn't, it didn't age well. I don't know what I don't, it is. You don't I know think you if mean. they like updated it, it would be like. But they would have to change like the whole mechanic. Like I felt like the mechanic didn't age well. And that that that's why I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like okay. that's why I'm ex- excited. You know, what I'm saying it's like this could be like a modern adaptation of like a twisted metal type of game because it's like in the end it's like you know you're driving your car and you're destroying other cars and you got all these other abilities and stuff like that. So I feel you. Like feel you. it has the potential. I'm yeah. sorry to mean to cut. You off, <clears throat> no, no, you good, you good. I I am interested in playing it. I'm definitely interested in checking it out. I just, uh, I, I know everybody was claiming for Twisted Metal, and I feel like it just won't necessarily age well. But I'm certainly willing to try, especially a free game, unless I'm definitely mm-hmm. willing to try it, see what's up. Um, for me, though, <clears throat> say a game that got delayed in 2020 that I'm looking forward to in 2021. Let's see. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Cyberpunk. <laughs> What no, the next I'm version? Not, yeah, oh, I'm messing, I'm messing, messing around. Messing around. It's it got just, delayed again. <laughs> I mean, it basically, it, it might as well have been delayed again. It got delayed no. oh, it's, it's, <laughs> the game's not done. We know the game's not really done. Nah, I'm messing around. Um, although I am really looking oh, forward man. to the the uh, the next gen expansion and hopefully them getting all the bugs out of the way and whatnot because I'm still diving deeper and deeper into that game. Um, I do enjoy it, yeah. but m- I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Dying Light 2. I really, really, really loved the first game. Um, for those who don't know, like <clears throat> Dying Light was made by the same people who made uh, Dead Island. Dead Island was an t- extremely fun game, but they basically took Dead Island mechanics, um, refined it a bit, and then added parkour. And it's just, it was just like a wild ride. And D- Dying Light 2 just looks like a massive expansion on that. Uh, the game was supposed to have come out I want to say spring 2020, and then it got delayed, and we haven't heard a word since. Uh, they don't even have a tentative date for 2021. Um, I'm hoping we get something. I'm hoping it comes out in spring of 2021 on next gen, but we haven't heard anything, and I'm really looking forward to that game. So, it's going to be my All right. I hear that. Well, <clears throat> let me throw my name in the hat. For me, I know you, you guys probably don't even care about this game, but for me, it's Biomutant. I have been waiting for this game. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, y'all, y'all know the game I'm talking about, right? That little... Yeah. little mm-hmm. All right. Dude, min-maxing, kung fu, and RPG elements. I, I, I'm here for it. I've been wide arms open. They're open. Okay. And the game's just been taking forever. But the thing about it is, like, at least with some of the other delays, they give you, like, a... I mean, unless you're like Bioware and we're talking about the Anthem 2.0 thing, but in general, you usually kind of at least get some kind of like time frame, even mm-hmm. if it doesn't have like a month. Kind of like no, but with this, it's like, dude, they just keep on saying 2020, no month, no day, just 2020. Then 2020 is up here and gone, and then it's like 2021. <laughs> y'all not even saying early 2021 or late. Y'all not. It's just y'all messing with people's emotions. I'm not okay with it. And yeah, y'all have to do better. That's all I'm saying. But COVID, okay. bro, you gotta, gotta cut them, cut them This sweet, has bro. been cooking before COVID. <laughs> it was supposed to already be done before COVID even got going. <clears throat> but 
But I mean, uh, you know, this you don't want it to turn out to be like another cyberpunk situation. You know what I'm saying? There's no way this can go there. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> Like, there is you look minimal at hype. Cyberpunk, bro. Like, dude, no. The, but the hype doesn't even compare. And then in Cyberpunk, the game just has more stuff. Clearly, whatever's going on in Biomutant, you're not even going to have as much action on the screen at one time as you do in. Mm-hmm. Like, I'd be walking through in Cyberpunk, and my frames slow down really bad. Um, you know that area where they have a little circle plaza close to where your apartment is in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why, for whatever reason, but right there, my Johns go from like whatever they're at to like two FPS, and then as soon as I cross the street, it'd be like, oh yeah, we're good. Catch back up. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. funny. Hmm. Yeah, that's weird. Um, Biomutant. I feel like I've definitely seen the game. Um, it looks so good, dude. It looks it <sighs> looks cool. I mean, I'm excited to to play it, but it is weird that like it it looks like a smaller game. So I'm surprised that. <laughs> It just kind of faded into obscurity, you know. And Manny, I honestly never he, heard of Biomune, which is like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you mentioned um, COVID, right? And you know, I understand that COVID definitely is taking a toll on the game industry, and a lot of games got delayed, and so on and so forth. But <clears throat> I think for me, the biggest thing is like, let's get some transparency going. You know, like, okay, if you're gonna delay the game, that's fine, whatever. But <clears throat> let's have a conversation around like the time frame that we plan on coming out with it for like if you if you said 2020 2020 comes and goes and you say nothing like and then you just say 2021 i don't know like it kind of sucks like we that's that's what i'm saying we need some transparency you know like like a game that could have easily been on this list for me was halo i i actually fully expected someone else to say that but um halo you know that got delayed obviously very high profile situation there but at least at the end of the year, they came out and said, this is where we're at. We got a multiplayer update. This, are, this is how things are cooking. Here's some screenshots. It's going to come next fall. Like, there's an update, right? We know yeah. at least what's happening. They didn't just completely keep us in the dark. And I feel like that's sometimes where I have a hard time with certain studios just not saying anything at all. I definitely understand not wanting to show something before it's ready. I'm perfectly cool with that. But sometimes if a game gets delayed that you expect it to come in that year and then you don't say anything that entire year and then like mm-hmm. i don't know it's, it's give yeah. us something i know i know what you mean yeah, yeah. just give yep. us something yep. it, it sucks well, what was the game called again i want to see like a screenshot record of it biomutant Bio. it sounds familiar but it don't it's like, funny if you watch the trailer you would think it's very almost done because the trailer makes it look like it's oh it's, is this the game that's supposed to be like the dark souls of like but like I guess more child friendly. <laughs> yeah, like a child friendly yeah. Dark Souls. Okay, I I definitely seen like the like the trailer and everything like that. I remember it being d- yeah. billed as a Dark Souls esque game. So yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, <sighs> aside from the delayed games, you know, let's 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 shove away from the the bad news. I guess you want to say, and let's uh, let's get into some of our predictions for the year. So, uh, you know. I guess diving right into it, <clears throat> I think 2020 had you know its fair share of gaming trends. Obviously, Twitch blew up last year just around the idea that people were at home; they really didn't have much else to do. You know, people were gaming a lot more. They were watching other people game a lot more. A lot more people picked up, you know, capture cards, and so obviously, you know, I think all three of us here oh, can yeah. attest to that. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. You know, like the content creation game kind of took a step up this year because everybody, you know, want more creativity got fused into that space, whether it was YouTube or uh, Twitch or Mixer, rest in peace. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, you know, that that was definitely a big trend for this year. Are there any trends in particular you guys foresee or are hoping to see come around this time this year? Well, I know we talked about this earlier, me and you, Denzel, but um, with the whole cloud gaming event, you know, with the whole Xbox cloud gaming uh, on its Samsung and now, like, it, you know, rumored to be um, paired with, like, the Samsung TVs mm-hmm. and, like, coming to iOS uh, hopefully sometimes uh, soon. But I think, like, cloud gaming might be, or, like, game streaming might be the next big thing, uh, the next big main thing, because, you know, xCloud is already, like, something that's happening. Um, and I've also been hearing too, like PlayStation might 
tap on a thing where it was like I forgot where I read it, but that you could be able to play like stream PS5 games on like the PS4 someday. Mm, I heard that. Yeah, I heard the rumor about that too. And it's like you know, it's crazy to be able to play your PS5 games on a PS4 when you don't have like the PS5 because we know how like limited they are nowadays or like mm. even to just turn on a TV in the living room when your console is like in your bedroom and be able to just stream like Halo Infinite when the game can drops if it's able to be able to run on like the cloud streaming service because we know um, I think currently it's only like Xbox Series, Xbox One S games but mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think I think streaming might be like one of those big hits this year for uh, gaming. So game streaming as opposed to like Twitch type of streaming, right? Okay. I yeah, mean, I, game streaming. Yeah, I th- I think that'd be dope. I mean, we can go around the room and talk about that alone because I'm actually really excited for that. Uh, I don't, and I'm glad you mentioned specifically the idea of streaming in your home, like to a TV. Because I don't yeah. think that I've heard some other people talk about streaming like xCloud b- being a bigger thing this year. And I don't think it'll be a bigger thing this year, mainly for the idea that we're still having like COVID is still a very real thing. <laughs> like, yeah, we have vaccines, but that seems to be going really, really, really slow. And I, I still think the majority of this year we will be quarantined, you know, pr- pretty much. So I don't think we'll have a lot of people on the go. But I think there's a huge opportunity for for new customers who don't have Xboxes and do have Samsung TVs, or they have, uh, like, a Roku box, you know, like, those types of things. Um, I think there's a real opportunity there. And, you know, we already know that at least Microsoft is thinking about putting them on TVs, right? Phil Spencer has (laughs) mentioned uh, a couple times that, you know, they do plan on getting an app on a TV within 12 months, and that was that interview was back in November, October, something along, along those lines. So, yeah. you know, I would say by, by the end of next year, we'll definitely have streaming apps on TVs. And I think that can go a long way to, you know, help gaming grow even more. Like, obviously, Xbox is one factor of that. You, Manny, you mentioned Sony. Sony already has somewhat of a presence there with, um, was it PlayStation Now? Yeah. Yeah, and they, they've already partnered with Microsoft in regards to uh, the cloud infrastructure and it looks like that's well, we'll get into predictions for for the big three in a moment. But that you know, a little spoiler there. That's one of my big predictions for PlayStation is I think they're going to try to make a big push into the the streaming front. They're really going to try to take a look a hard look at their infrastructure and try to get it up to to speed to kind of at least compete with Microsoft. I mean, it, it's funny because in that in a way to compete with Microsoft, they actually have to go to Microsoft. So Microsoft <laughs> ends up winning in the long term. Yeah. But you know, I, I think. Um, from the, the gamer's mindset of, okay, X Cloud versus whatever PlayStation has to offer, they need to be competitive in that way. And I think that they'll make the push for it. And, you know, it'll line Microsoft's pockets in the process. So that's mm-hmm. fun to see, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Chris, what do you think about the game streaming thing, man? Um, yeah, I think it's just going to continue to grow. Um, I think I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of new platforms came out like other options Mm -hmm. um in terms of just because it can't just be twitch and youtube forever i think the 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 field is getting so big that people wouldn't mind dipping out into other films because like for example right we all kind of thought facebook gaming wasn't that but i can't lie like i don't hear bad things from a good amount of folks recently about it Mm -hmm. so that makes me think oh well maybe it's not so bad you know what i'm saying so like i think there definitely is Man, it sucks because if Mixer never got taken out, I think Mixer would have been doing really good this year. I think they would have had a really big jump. Um, but just because they're out, it doesn't mean that I don't think somebody else could come in and kind of become the the de facto third wheel. Because like Facebook gaming kind of is that, but a lot of people reject it. So I kind of feel like there's still space for somebody else to kind of come in and take some of the other people who want to do their thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just to be clear, though, I'll, so <clears throat> you're talking about content creation streaming. Right. But we're, right, we're right. I guess we're more talking about like um, like xCloud, that type of streaming stuff. But Oh, uh, well, yeah, that's that's something that I think is going to, yeah, that's going to change a lot of stuff, man. Because like, especially when you think about like how it's going to work on people's cell phones. Like I know everybody keeps talking about TV thing or whatever, but I think the cell phone thing is even bigger because you can be in a bathroom stall at like the airport playing your game 
if you want to, you know, like the accessibility that you get to be able to do this off of a cell phone is stupid, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Stupid in a good way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) It's just, oh my God, it's wild to think because the cell phones keep getting better, the technology keeps getting better. It's almost like it's all catching up with each other at the same time. And now there's about to be this huge explosion of like new ways to go about making content or whatever. But yeah, yeah, the streaming thing is going to be humongous, especially for more than just gaming too. I think a lot of people also, again, we touched on that a couple episodes back. People are starting to realize these platforms are not just only for that. I think a lot of other people who want to do podcasts, people who want to do their own versions of a TV show, people who want to do their own versions of whatever they want to do, they're going to be coming out more now, too, thinking, okay, oh, yeah, I could do that, for sure. And, yeah, it's going to keep growing, man. It's going to keep growing. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, definitely. crazy. <clears throat> I'm glad you mentioned the podcast thing, because uh, that something to look out for, guys. We're, we're going to try to uh, to start doing live versions of our podcast on Twitch at, at some point this year. Hopefully, at some point this month. Um, still working that out. <laughs> but, but, yeah, that, keep, keep an eye on that. That's something we got coming down the pipeline but um but yeah so manny manny's thing was uh was game streaming for the year chris what other trends are you looking forward to this year uh i think vr gaming could kind of take a step um just because i again i kind of think it's one of those things where it's 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 pretty popular for some folks but i can't say that i think everybody has a vr headset in their household I can't say that a lot of people even have even used one, to be honest. A lot of people mm-hmm. haven't. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's getting to the point now where some of the games we're starting to see, um, especially some of the nominees from the Game Awards last year, like the Half-Life and stuff like that, Like yeah. those to me are taking leaps forward in terms of how you make a VR game and how you make it be like truly effective. Every time I've ever played one in the past, it's cool for a little bit, but I can't see myself sitting there for hours doing it. Whereas I think I think it's getting there. You know, I think I think... Yeah, I think this might be a year where we see it take a step forward for sure. Just depends on if they got the titles for it, but I think the tech is where it needs to be right now. Mm. I think it was a little bit behind before, and it's 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 almost there. Almost yeah, there. I feel that I'm <clears throat> I'm I'm excited to see that type of stuff take off, and uh, VR in particular is something that mm-hmm. I definitely love. Like I have an Oculus. Uh, I had an Oculus Rift. Um, I got an Oculus Quest, the first edition. I'm looking forward to getting the two. It, it's been out for a little while, but um, I'm looking to get the two. It's actually at a very affordable price point, in my opinion. It's it, I think it starts at two ninety nine. Um, it's you know about the same price as a Series S right now. So I think the thing that's going to put it over the top <clears throat> is the titles, like you mentioned, right? Like Half Half Life Alice. That's a pretty big name. That's a big profile game. Um, I think if we got more higher profile games like when we get to the point where call of duty has a vr game on oculus or something along those lines like that that's when it becomes ubiquitous right like you get the next halo in vr at some level that's huge yeah i mean i i think and i and i give uh credit to sony on this too playstation vr very very good product like something that They've clearly, you know, found found a niche for, and they've they've sold tons of units on that. Um, I think that the other major players need to come correct too. Like I think once we get an Xbox VR, once PlayStation brings out the PlayStation VR for PlayStation Five, and well, Nintendo Nintendo does whatever Nintendo wants to do. But if they also come out with something along those lines, and we have that sort of ubiquity in gaming where multi-platform VR games exist. So you have a multi-platform game that's on PlayStation VR, Oculus. Um, what's it called now? Is it still called the Vive? I don't know. Well, I haven't heard. for lack of a better term, <laughs> the, but, the, yeah. the Vive. Um, and then, you know, whatever Xbox comes out with. Like, if, if those major platforms all have a VR experience, I, like, that's it. That, like, VR will have arrived in my mind when that happens because right now it's here it's cool it's kind of a niche um it works really well and the technology is there but we need the higher profile players to, to really get on board we need xbox to get on board we need those high profile games to be on board like half-life and the medal of honor game that just came out that's just the tip of the iceberg and granted they have a lot of amazing experiences on vr already like beat saber is an amazing game um 
but we need the more like Ted Pole franchises, like like a Battlefield, like a, a Call of Duty, like a Halo, like a God of War, or so, you know, like those high profile games with AAA studios making those games. Like yeah. that's when it'll really be here, and it, it'll be like something that people are running out to grab. You know, they they need to have it, gotta have it, kind of thing. Um, I I can't wait for that. I I'm not entirely sure it'll be this year, but I do think it's coming. Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised more developers haven't taken advantage of the uh, you know, those games like how they have the uh, what's the name of the studio, Quantic Dream. They make the yep. heavy rain and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised they haven't made a VR game like that yet. One of those heavily decision-based video games, but VR. I, I think that'd be hella dope. I think the reason why studios like that may not do it, and this is why I think it's so important for Microsoft to get involved in this, um, in addition to you know other, other players. I think there are so little units out there that it's, it's almost immediately a risk for them to create a game like that, right? Because yeah, if it doesn't sell... Like Crowd and Dream is already a small studio, right? Like they're they're independent. Like nobody owns them in any meaningful way. If if Sony bought them, I could see them clearly making stuff for PSVR, and I'm I'm pretty confident they would they would make an amazing game, an amazing immersive experience. Mm-hmm. But those games end up being a risk for them in VR in a platform that not a lot of people have. You know, you look at the way game development is right now. It's a large reason why there's a lot of these cross-platform games that are still coming out right now, where or sorry, cross-generational games that are still coming out right now, where you have some you know games that are working on the Series X and the One X, um, or the One in general, right, and the PlayStation uh, Four and the PlayStation Five. Like, I think they don't want to take too many risk by making something for a smaller denominator, you know, like the smallest common denominator. They want to be able to make sure that everybody can play their games. So. I think that's why we're not seeing as many vr games right now but hopefully you know hopefully it'll change oh, next year yeah, 2022 no. imagine hellblade in vr yeah that would be dope that would be so dope man <laughs> that that With would the be voices so, and stuff in yeah, VR. yeah that bro. would be so oh trippy God, that's crazy <laughs> and you're just like looking around like, like yeah. who said that yeah <laughs> yeah <Wow. man. laughs> We're not I, ready for that. <laughs> you know, I I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if these are things, these are conversations that are happening, like, you know, like on, on the horizon. Like mm. those types of experiences are so cool. Like they're already crazy immersive as it is, th- with the way they set up like um, you know, Dolby Atmos audio and whatnot. So if they can expand that in VR. Also, imagine game streaming. With VR, I don't know, like how I was gonna bring that up. I don't know, so. yeah, I don't know how much that's gonna like that. That's gotta, gonna blow. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta like kill networks. But man, that would be cool too. You need five G. You gotta get five G. <laughs> Game Pass with the streaming services. Microsoft hired me right now. <laughs> oh my god! Can you imagine being at work in the bathroom stall, dropping a deuce, VR headset. Phone, <laughs> just chilling. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one to the on the person, and that person's in there playing COD, and he's oh oh, what is he doing? In sorry, sorry, I, my brain just goes in a wild direction. No, you're whatever you just said. This is I'm just gonna go like completely left on this. So, <sighs> so Oculus Quest, right? It's basically an Android device, right? It runs on Android. So you can sideload Android apps onto an Oculus Quest. I'm oh. thinking if I sideload the um, Game Pass app and like stream my Xbox games to my Oculus Quest, bro, I'm trying that tonight. Experiment. <laughs> I'm Experiment. trying that tonight. I- I'll let y'all wow, know how that knows. goes because that's actually yeah. a dope idea. I'm going to figure out how to make that work. I try. I already tried to do that on my uh, Chromecast, like my Google TV. It did not work well at all. It was completely <laughs> terrible experience. So I kind of suspect it's going to be the same thing with this Quest, but I'm still going to give it a try, and I'll let y'all know how it goes. Stay tuned for that. Yeah, you can do that with COD Mobile. If that works, I'm going to be like, whoa. COD Ooh. Mobile in your VR. What? Oh, man. That's yeah, try it out, bro. Yeah, try that's kind of hot. That's kind of hot. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. No, let me stop. Let's, let's move it on. So, uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't actually say my trend for 2021. I, um, I think, I guess it's a trend that we've kind of seen a little bit start in 2020, 
but the the rise of like party games i think that's going to be something that gets even bigger in uh 2021 like the yeah. fall guys type games you know among us i would consider a party game as well like i think we'll get more of those the game that i'm really 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 hoping for and this this will met, kind of mesh into um a topic about microsoft and what we expect them to do in this year but one thing I really, really want to see. I don't know if you guys have ever played this game, but it's called Fusion Frenzy. It's fucking amazing. It's it's like ah, it's basically Xbox attempt at Mario Party, but they like they killed it. Oh, it's just I've so much this. fun. Yeah. Oh, man. I know, I, I, that, that game is a hater. Yeah, that game <laughs> hits. Like I can. Oh man, it, it would have been the perfect game to swing out. Like mid COVID, like pandemic, all that stuff. Like everybody quarantined, just being at home, playing, you know, online. Like I-, I could see that game blowing up in the same way that Fall Guys blew up, the same way that um, Among Us blew up. Like mm. the content creators are gonna go off with that game if they actually do come out with it. Man, Microsoft, please, please just make that game for us because I think that would be huge, man. I would. Fusion, like, <laughs> yo, man, why you gotta do that, yo? And I got me all hyped for a game that came out like twenty years ago. Yo, the game's mad old, but yo, twenty twenty, they brought me Perfect Dark. Twenty twenty one, I need y'all to bring me Fusion Frenzy, please, mm. please. Ah, oh, yes, I'll be so happy. That ah. definitely will be a hitter. Yeah. I, oh my god, yes. Um, but yeah, so so as I was saying, that's pretty much gonna kind of take up my Microsoft version of what I think is gonna happen this year. But uh, but Chris, you know, any predictions for for Microsoft in particular this year? Anything you think you're gonna see them do? Um, Whether it's a game or you know direction you think they're gonna go in? Honestly, I think I don't think they're done buying studios. I I, I could see another big announcement getting made this year for sure. Um, don't know who. Not sure, but like it's gonna be another hitter because they just been buying up hitters. Uh, <laughs> it's have. gonna be somebody like that. So I see that happening. Um, I think a lot more BRs are gonna step into the fray now too because it seems like last year we got how many like like at least five newer ones, and I think they just keep on kind of coming out of the woodwork. I also think there's a little bit of BR fatigue amongst a, a good amount of people too, but. They're not stopping. They're gonna keep that going. So I think we're gonna see some new, new versions of it. Um, especially because Fall Guys came out and did what they did. I really think Fall Guys opened the door for like the unorthodox BR style games to kind of like shine. Because mm-hmm. I, I I didn't see that game doing what it did. It came out of nowhere and it kind of was like, oh yeah, I am kind of competing to be the last person here, but like I'm not camping in a building and and I'm not doing that. You know, I have to literally be good at moving around and doing these little puzzles and stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and no, I think like a those are going to continue to evolve. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think that's going to keep happening. Um, so, <sighs> well, so we're gonna we're gonna keep going into a couple other like, I guess subcategories, but specifically for Microsoft. So, you just stick into the the purchase the company purchasing. Yeah, I, I could see them doing that for sure. Huh? I can't really think of much else what they might... Kind of, I mean, I know the xCloud thing is going to be pretty big too, but I don't know prediction-wise what to say about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. That's <clears throat> that's my prediction. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. I One more thing. One more thing. Okay, okay. Okay. And it's not really a prediction. It's more of a, a massive want. <laughs> but it's a Microsoft want. Okay. I really need them to... And this is a Halo thing. I need Halo, the, the multiplayer, I need it to be, like, outstanding. I need it to, like... <laughs> no, no, I'm... De- like, listen, listen. <laughs> Halo it's, Battle Royale. No, no, no not, I'm not even asking for that. Because I'm, I'm not even asking for that. I'm talking about straight-up multiplayer. The reason why I need it to be, like, outstanding is because, like, I need... A lot of these other games are kind of stuck in their ways, I kind of feel like. And I think one of these games kind of has to... Push us forward. You know, right, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think Halo can do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't know, but I'm just hoping that, like, please come with this shit hard. 
I like because I play these multiplayer games now, and I'm a little bit late behind the ball on a lot of them and stuff. But after a while, they get a little samey, and I'm just hoping that Halo really gives us something refreshing, something that's like, oh yeah, I gotta get on and get back in there. And you got a whole five hour session in, and you didn't even know that five hours passed. Like it's a it's been a long time since something kind of itched me like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I need that to be a thing too. So uh, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because uh, that's definitely something we're going to talk about in our, in our next segment after we get through the our, our per- general predictions. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, so Manny, what about you, man? Microsoft, what do you what are we expecting from Microsoft this year? Microsoft going to come with the heaters. Uh, they're going. Uh, I'll say they're going to drop in their uh, little game thing game show whatever because e3 probably ain't gonna happen this year again mm. uh i'm gonna say they're gonna drop some fable gameplay or like a fable like a something with fable i know so you think we'll finally like see that. like fable we'll finally see year. fable we'll okay. finally get a release date i feel like that might happen okay um that and uh you know maybe maybe a bethesda announcement hopefully on a microsoft press conference you know okay. since microsoft so yeah, I, you know, either Starfield, Wolfenstein Three, whatever they want to push out, and then you know, hopefully a drop for this exclusive. this year. <laughs> so that's that's my kind of my uh, little gaming prediction for what Microsoft will drop this year, or like showcase and their little uh, event. Okay, I'm sure that Microsoft is going to have plenty of events over the course of the year. So, but if they do have like a, a seminal game showcase, like they did last year. I can see Starfield being in there. I I personally think that, um, and many I know we, we talked about this a little bit earlier. <clears throat> Starfield will definitely be announced this year and will release this year. I think the moment, well, let me not, not say the moment, but around the time that the deal gets finalized for Microsoft to formally purchase or absorb Bethesda, I think that's when we'll see that announcement come, and that's when it'll say xbox exclusive game pass yada 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 like that is like i wholeheartedly believe that that is when we're gonna see that hit maybe that's like february march or something along those lines but i'm i'm fully expecting to see that pretty soon hey man i hope so you know what i'm saying coming to game pass that's f-r-e-e that spells free <laughs> well, i mean it's not free, but, but is it <laughs> it's not free it's, but i it's, mean it's worth it yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's worth it's it's a great deal 15 bucks a month if you get an ultimate or 10 bucks a month if you're just getting regular game pass big big deal absolutely big deal and uh yeah. forza better be in tokyo they better like you know anybody <laughs> the new price better be on tokyo drifting in the mountains do 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 <laughs> i'm hoping what we get from horizon <clears throat> is so so um for those who don't know and many again we talked about this earlier too but uh forza the new Forza that they're coming out with for next gen, um, at least the way that they've described it so far, they haven't really officially dove into this yet, but it seems like what they're doing is taking the Forza Motorsport franchise and making that more of a game as a service. It seems like there won't be a Forza 8. Um, it'll just be Forza, and they'll just continue to update it as time goes on. You know, Turn 10 will probably just continue updating the engine, keep pushing out cars, keep pushing out tracks, so on and so forth. I can see Playground Games doing the exact same thing with Forza and just making it like, I don't know, Forza Festivals or whatever. So we won't have a Forza Horizon 5. We'll just have Forza Festivals and <clears throat> this one will be in Tokyo and that that will be freaking sick because if we get our Tokyo Drift on, I will be so excited. Uh, <laughs> but then like, you know, every year or so, it's a new, like instead of coming out with a brand new Forza Horizon or whatever it is, it's just here's like the next place, and it's it's all built, it's all contained within that same game, you know. Like they change the map or they change the the festival or whatever it happens to be. I can totally see them doing that, and personally, I love Horizon a lot more than Motorsport. I'm not really like a big car guy, <clears throat> so you know I enjoy the the fun and the arcadey sense of what Horizon has to offer. So. I'm looking forward to that. I hope Microsoft really kills that. Dope. Same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're moving <clears throat> on to Sony. So what, what are we expecting from Sony this year, guys? Chris, I'll let you start it off again, man. 
Honestly, if I had to come up with one thing for Sony, I think you're just going to start to see more of the devs start to truly take advantage of the controller. Um, Because it seems like there's certain games that kind of took a little bit of advantage of it, but nothing on the level of the the Astros Playroom, the little thing that they made to showcase the controller itself. Mm -hmm. They got to, I think once people get more comfortable, we'll start to see more more utilization of the different functions because it's it's good tech man and everybody loves it and you're not seeing enough people use it yet but it's kind of like how i feel with the consoles in general i think this upcoming year is second wind like this is when the hit is gonna hit because oh. last year the rollout was a little rough you know a little rough <laughs> yeah yeah, I don't think we had as many games, <clears throat> you know, as we would typically have at a console launch. Um, I mean, some people argue differently, but I don't know. I, Sony, Sony had a decent, you know, set of first-party games. Obviously, they had Spider-Man, they mm-hmm. had Demon Souls. Um, you know, so they definitely did well, but but Microsoft definitely needed that thing. Obviously, we know it was supposed to be Halo, and Halo was sorely missed. But I think, yeah, I agree with you, Chris. This year is going to be the year where. We see not just Sony, but Microsoft and, uh, you know, even even in PC gaming, right? Like we, we got a whole new line of uh, graphics cards last year from NVIDIA and AMD. I think we're really going to start to see gaming kind of push the boundaries of, of what those pieces of hardware have to offer. And, you know, we'll, we'll really start to see next gen actually be here, you know, fully mm-hmm. show us what it's capable of. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Manny? But I mean, I'm like, I know... Uh... You know, talking about the controller, like I've been playing like games. Um, like for example, I got Demon Souls, and I do like there is some like features that they do use the controller, which is pretty dope. Like for example, when you're using a bow and arrow in Demon Souls, um, like when you draw it, and like you can if you press it like halfway, there's like no tension, and it'll just be like a light arrow shot. But then like if you try to pull it all the way down, when you try to do like a more of like a I guess you could say, like, an arrow shot that would do more damage. Like, you feel that tension where he draws it back even more to get that power. So, like, I mean, there's still, like, games like that that do utilize the features. And then I know Call of Duty with the shooting uh, and 2K with the turbo. So I'm sure, like, they'll showcase something. God of War is coming out this year. So, like, we'll see something with that. We also uh, um, see how we'll probably even utilize in a racing game like Gran Turismo 7 that's hopefully coming out as well, which would be pretty dope. Yeah. I think that's Horizon might be the game, game we see. Too. Yeah, Horizon. True, yeah, I game. forgot Horizon, yeah. The bow Horizon and arrow West. thing specifically in that game, I think you'll see that utilized heavily. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Word. For sure, for sure. But, okay. you know, yeah. what I'm expecting Sony to drop this year, though, is I better see a hater. <laughs> <laughs> I but think they, they got a couple I, things I think, on the horizon. I think, because I've been hearing rumors, and obviously rumors is rumors, but I think we might, well, this is probably me just hoping at this moment, finally get that Silent Hills that we want, you know, that mm. been, mm. we've been waiting for, for like almost a console generation or whatever. <laughs> I think ev- everybody's talked about that. <clears throat> I I mean... I'm probably going to eat my words saying this. I, I think we'll get a Silent Hill game. I just don't think it's the way that everybody thinks it's going to be. Like, it's not going to be PT. It's not going to be Kojima. It's not going to be, like, a, a PlayStation exclusive. Like, I think that Konami, who still doesn't really have their shit together, let's be real. Um, mm-hmm. I think that they're seeing this clamoring <laughs> of support and want for a Silent Hills game. And at that point, why would you sell it to anybody? Like, you own that property... Just see if you can mix, have somebody go make it yourself, right? Like, I think we'll get that game. I don't think it'll be this year, but I think we'll get that game soon. Um, and it won't be a PlayStation exclusive. That's that's my opinion. Um, okay. But yeah. But as far as Sony this year, I think my... I mean, we talked about it earlier, but I think my biggest prediction is that they'll, they'll have their Game Pass uh, competitor this year, finally. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it'll necessarily be, like, the xCloud stuff mixed into it just yet but i think they'll get on the board with something more in line with what game pass has to offer 
Maybe just the, it's in its like gestation period, and they'll maybe flush it out a little bit more. Maybe they won't. the 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 thing, the interesting thing is, Sony doesn't necessarily need to do much of anything, which is why, in my opinion, they're like a very boring company to look at right now. Like they're in the lead; they're pretty comfortable <clears throat> with that lead. They're still gonna push out great content. Um, you know, they have a pipeline of really good games that are coming out. But as far as like interesting moves in the way that we see. Microsoft buying up studios, making bold moves, bold consumer-friendly moves. I don't really see that happening for Sony right now. They're in the lead, so, you know, again, why, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Um, and plus, I don't think they have as much, even though they are successful, I don't think they have as much money to take the types of risks that Microsoft can take. So I think you'll just kind of see more of the same from them this year for the most part. But I think they'll try to get on the board with some sort of Game Pass equivalent. So, and I'm... I'm excited to see whatever that looks like. I can see it. I yeah. can definitely see it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. All right. And uh, last but not least, we're, uh, we're going to talk about Nintendo a little bit. So any specific predictions? Chris is shaking his head already, so we'll see how this goes. Um, Manny? You know, speaking of the topic of delays... When are they gonna show that Metroid like something? They oh they announced God. that like Metroid game like three <laughs> years ago. Four, bro, this this better be the year where we get some Metroid news because like it's just you know I'm surprised I didn't even use this in my delay topic. Yeah, I was <laughs> but, gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> this game has, like was announced like I said a long time ago, and we just haven't heard anything from it like. Maybe this is the year they actually show some Metroid gameplay, or at least give us some kind of news. But I wouldn't be surprised if they hit us with like new Smash Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's been the extent of ex- Nintendo excitement recently. So uh, I sure. believe you when you say that. That's probably what it's gonna be. Um. <laughs> I'm definitely leaning a different, little differently. Bowser, bro, not even regular Bowser. Oh King man, Bowser. that's gonna Bowser. hold us over. For like, <laughs> yeah, Bowser. Oh, that's God. gonna hold us over for a good four or five months on the Nintendo front. Oof. Chris, is that yeah. is that your prediction? You got something else for? Me? Ah shit. Um. <laughs> I don't know what to say in terms of predictions. Um, the most positive thing I can kind of guess is maybe we get like a Breath of the Wild teaser or something like that, like a first sequel finally. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are waiting for that. Um, that's probably one of the reasons I still have my Switch, that and Pokemon. If it wasn't for them, oh my God. <laughs> I swear to God I would have it. But, <laughs> but I think maybe we get something for Breath of the Wild too. Or maybe they surprise everybody and actually announce like they got some updated version of the Switch to finally sell that maybe might have like better hardware or something because that'd be very nice. I, I I keep getting on Nintendo in general for their lack of like sitting at the table, and I know they don't necessarily have to do what I want them to do because they're doing fine. But as a gamer, it's just like my God, I just want you guys to just step it up, please. Just yeah. give me party chat. Give me party chat. <laughs> Me party chat at least. <laughs> <laughs> they got Discord. We got Discord in the computer. Oh, <laughs> That's man. the closest thing you go get a party Let chat. Me talk with the homies when I'm on this. Like, golly, why is that not a thing yet, bro? I, I... Yeah, it's <sighs> uh, it's it's rough out here as far as Nintendo yeah. goes. I I would definitely my prediction is is gonna lean a little bit into yours. I actually firmly believe that we'll get something in regards to either a switch pro or a switch two um mm-hmm. i think it's time it's been it's been out here for so long <laughs> and it's such a uh outdated piece of hardware <clears throat> i mean they could they could slap like the processor in my phone in there and it'd be better than what's already in you know like better than that tech or two i think it is that's that's like I think the 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 processor that's in the Switch was already like a three or four year old processor to begin with. Yeah. So yeah, if if Nintendo can finally take that step into you know the, the new decade Man. and give us something, like it would be it'd be so nice to have a newer system, you know, newer system and have them 
have Breath of the Wild 2 come out and have graphically look a little bit better. Although I think, you know, they they don't necessarily aim for graph like high graphical fidelity. Yeah. But I do think Breath of the Wild is a beautiful game. I think Breath of the Wild 2 is something that we will see this year in some form or fashion. Um again, <laughs> teaser for our next section as well. Uh but but yeah, but Breath of the Wild and a Switch Pro or 2 is definitely going to be my prediction here. Anything else you guys got for Nintendo? Man, Nintendo's dry. <laughs> <laughs> talk. <laughs> let's be real. Talk, bro, talk, Besides man. Animal Crossing, though. Animal Crossing. Let's, let's get that clear, guys. Animal they might add a new yeah. fish. I think they're going to add a new fish to the pond for Manny to go get. Oh, you know? Man. Sparkly right, fish. Well, <clears throat> we're going to take a quick break. Um, quick little ad break, and we'll be right back with the next section. All right, guys, we're back. So <laughs> next segment here. So we're going to talk about the most important game of the year for each uh, each of the big three. So we're going to go through the list again, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo. Um, so, you know, we're going to start off with Microsoft. I think this one's pretty easy <laughs> for all of yes. us here. But yeah, um, oh. there it is. <laughs> most, most important game of the year. Uh, so Manny, you're going with Halo, right? Oh, <laughs> all right. Chris, Halo, Halo gotta do it, man. Yeah. Gotta do it. Listen, I know ain't nobody gonna come out here and make the new. Like, we're not gonna get a black remastered or nothing like that to, to try to compete with COD. So that's not happening. So, <laughs> Halo. I just said it a little bit ago. I needed to come out and PVP some shit up. Like, let's go. Stir the pot, man. Let's get something new. Make people want to get on every day. Not even for the story, just to play multiplayer. Yeah. That, that's what I want to see. <clears throat> Halo, I mean, Halo's, Halo's iconic, right? Like, every, everybody knows Halo. It's one of the biggest franchises in gaming history. It's bread and butter is multiplayer. Like, they, Microsoft needs that to go off. Like, just go off. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah they, they need to be sitting at the table with Call of Duty. Like, they need to be sitting at the table with um, Apex, so on and so yeah. forth. Like, mm-hmm. those, like, when people are talking about multiplayer games, if you're releasing a Halo in that year and you're not in that conver- – like, Halo's not in that conversation for multiplayer game of the year, you failed. Like, you failed. It's just that simple. <clears throat> Microsoft needs Halo to go off – I mean, if if this Halo doesn't hit, like, it it definitely it hurts Microsoft because Halo is Halo is Microsoft uh, Halo's Xbox Xbox is Halo like they are synonymous at this point. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Microsoft has a ton of bigger big franchises right now. Like they have a lot of different things that they can lean on as far as IPs. Gears of War is a pretty big IP, but yeah. nowhere near as close as Halo is. Halo is it for them. So yeah, they they need they need it to be revamped. They they can't afford for it to just be more of the same. I know people who still, you know, some of our friends, they play uh, Master Chief Collection on the regular, right? Mm-hmm. They've made a ton of big investments this year with putting um, some of the games in the mass, from the Master Chief Collection into, uh, on PC, I should say. The whole Master Chief Collection is in Game Pass. Like, mm-hmm. everything that they've done so far tells you that Microsoft understands how important Halo is to their future. Um uh, yeah, I'm I'm really hopeful, man. I I need that game to look amazing. I need it to play extremely fluid. It needs to push boundaries, like like Chris said earlier. It needs to push the the shooter, the first person shooter genre forward, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I know that a lot of people talked about BR. I don't even necessarily know if it needs a BR mode for for it to be in that conversation. I think that they can really refine the the arena shooter thing. But at the same time, Halo has also been known to give us some of those more quirky and, and different modes. Like, I, I don't know if you've, Manny, I think you've played it with us. Griffball? You play Griffball? Oh, well, Griffball be schmacking. Yeah, Griffball is a lot of fun. <laughs> it, it's basically like, uh, so Chris, I know you haven't, you never really played Halo, so you might not know this, but uh, I think back in Halo 3, they created something called the Forge. It's basically mm-hmm. like a map editor. In the game. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that spawned out of that, aside from the cr- amount of crazy, fun-ass custom games that existed, is this thing called Griffball. And it's it's basically like, I don't know, 
it's like football, I guess, <laughs> with like gravity hammers. So like you like you know one person has the ball and they kind of maneuver around and like the other people have the gravity hammer and they can. It it it's just a, a ton of fun. Like mm-hmm. definitely right. something you should play. So that type of stuff, like I'm expecting that type of stuff to hit in Halo Infinite as well, right? Like the competitive multiplayer side of things is gonna be huge, but like Forge needs to hit so that they can be those crazy game modes like new new game modes like Griff Ball. And like the racing um, worlds that they used to create and all that stuff, like I remember those, yeah, yeah, like that. That stuff was so much fun. Like I, I remember playing that stuff, like you know, back in college and stuff like that. I, I need that this year. I need more of that. So yeah, that's definitely going to be biggest game for Microsoft, and I think we're all in agreement on that. Um, so we'll move on to Sony. So uh, Chris, I'll let you start off this time. Um, what do you think is Sony's most important game this year? <laughs> Um, most important game for this year, I guess it's, it's got to be God of War, right? That's that's to me, it's got to be that. You already I can't know. think of anything other game that's like <laughs> as big. Okay. And gra- especially just because God of War, the last one, it hit so hard for so many people. Like that game was, it got lauded for like it's revampedness of the franchise i guess and um so i think people are very very much anticipating the sequel and it has to it has to hit you know the last one looked beautiful on the ps4 i can only imagine what they're gonna do once they finally like really really dig in with the ps5 mm. yeah I'd, I'd have to go with them i can't think of not one other game coming out this year for playstation okay specifically Any- yeah God of War, man. God of War. Like I know, I know Horizon is like another game probably gonna come out later on this year. <laughs> God, it ain't touching God of War. I'm gonna tell you that. God of War was a banger. Like I'm telling you, that like set the tone of what a game should be when it comes to a great storytelling game with the visuals and like everything like that, bro. Like I I I know this game is gonna be a hitter because. Santa Monica never fails, never, in my opinion. I would agree. They 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 always deliver, and that's mm-hmm. exactly why I don't think that God of War is the most important game for them. I think Horizon is. Um, I think God of War is already established. We already know what we're gonna get from God of War. I think it's gonna be a hitter. It's gonna be huge. Um, I think it'll be their biggest game of the year. I don't think it's their most important game. Of the year. I think Horizon needs to establish itself in the pantheon of games from Sony. And it's not there yet. I think Horizon um, Forbidden West is the game that needs to do that. Like when we think about Sony, we think about their their pillars or their mascots or whatever. Like just like when we think about um, Xbox, we think about Halo and Master Chief. We think about Gears. We think about Forza. Um, I think that for, um, Horizon is getting to that point, and yeah, I think this year sure. is where where that hits for them. I think you know obviously. I've heard some pretty mixed signals about the first game. Um, I think some. I've heard some people say that they thought it was relatively boring. What I played, I really wow. enjoyed. I I thought the world was beautiful, lush. Um, I think that this one is going to be even more lush, like from what we've seen from the the trailers or the the CG trailer that we saw. If that's the tone that they're setting for that world, yeah, I I think that might be their most important game, in my opinion. I think mechanically, it's a bit different. Um, I think visually it can be the most stunning. I'm more looking forward to the story to see where they go with everything. Um, because I really have no idea <laughs> where they're, where they're really moving towards G- God of War. I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of where they're going there because the name of the game is called Ragnarok. We know what Ragnarok is. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I. Uh-oh. I I I can agree. Like I I know what you mean now. I mean, more like when I say important game, you know, God of War is just the game I've been waiting for ever since uh, I finished God of War, the first one. So like you know what I'm saying, like that's why it's important to me. But yeah, well, Horizon, uh, I mean, uh, the Horizon yeah. definitely isn't like like you said uh, like those games where you say all oh, PlayStation is like you know it ain't it just ain't there. Horizon has a lot of room to still grow, though. That's the thing that's kind of wild with it. I can honestly say I think I can see where God of War ceiling is, even though I'm still kind of rocking with that as my answer. 
I kind of see where their ceiling is. I don't really see where they can add so much more that's like, oh, my God. Whereas Horizon Zero, man, like, they, the game is still fresh. They're literally on their second game, and, like, there's just so much more they can do with it. If they want to really go gung-ho, balls to the wall with the story, like how you're saying, they, they can do that. I, I don't see any reason why the story cannot get as detailed as, like, say, a God of War or a last of us or something like that i think it's it's definitely has the potential to get there uh man yeah that game is ridiculously well made we'll see what happens but it got the potential definitely mm. has the potential mm. okay okay so like 1a 1b yeah i mean I, that's i feel like those are really the only two choices in my opinion so yeah uh i think it's you know Obviously, I th- I also believe that God of War is important, but I think, um, yeah, Horizon is just it's not established yet, and I think you know that game can really take it over the edge. This this new one that's coming out this year. Um, yeah. All right, so most important game for Nintendo. <laughs> Animal Crossing, but you know, besides joking about Animal Crossing, Nintendo. Needs some needs to drop some this year. Like they need to announce like a game to drop this year. There ain't no important game if they have nothing that you know has been announced. Like <laughs> I just like I feel like right now their important game is the next uh, Smash character. Like <laughs> who's gonna be the next Smash character? Because that's the only thing they got. And like that's that, I I mean like that's it for me. Like yeah no. I- it seems like that's where we're leaning right now. Chris? Okay. Um, our most important Nintendo game. Golly. Ah, uh, Jesus. <laughs> you know what? My answer is going to be whatever game, whatever new IP that they have is their most important game to come on next year. That's the simplest answer I can give because, like, I'm so tired. I don't know how nobody else is tired of this. I am so tired of all the fact. The only thing we have to be excited for is, like Goop said, either a new Smash character or, like, you know, there's a new Mario coming out or there's a new Metroid coming out or some other game that they've been putting out for the last 30 years that has minimal changes between game to game to game. Like, I need just some brand new IP, some brand new type of game from them in order for me to feel like it was a success because man i'm just nintendo huh it's i have a hard time saying good things nowadays man i just uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah hopefully whatever they come up with that's new can hit because i feel like they're yeah. alienating their older audiences in some cases and i know before they had the whole thing where like the you know the wii's you know, everybody had a Wii in their house because they could play it with their family and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. so it's like, you can't keep resting on that, though. Like, it's been years since that was a thing. I don't know if that argument is as strong as it was back then. Okay. I mean, so my answer is definitely predicated on whether or not it actually releases. Because I think the last time I had understood it was supposed to release this year, but Breath of the Wild 2 would be my take for their most important game. Is it probably going to come this year? Probably not. Unless, it ain't gonna be there. <laughs> unless the only okay, I can see there being a Breath of the Wild two this year if they release the Switch Pro or the Switch Two. Like that would explain mm. to me why they've been sitting back a little bit, not saying anything. I I would take that as okay. This is like, this is what we've been getting ready to do, and now we've done it, kind of thing. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Have it be a launch title for the new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even with that, though, like, uh, like I'm looking forward to Breath of the Wild, but it's not new. It's, you know, it's still the same franchise we've been getting. I didn't need a new thing. All these other like franchises feel like they try new stuff, and it feels like Nintendo just is so. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've seen it. it. Is, they try. It they try arms. That downfall immediately. We, yeah. You know, we seen Splatoon. Splatoon had this little, you know, thing with the Wii U, but like actually, Splatoon, came out, Splatoon's a pretty. Uh, it's not like in the yeah. pantheon of games like 
Mario or anything like that. But Splatoon has this niche. Like people actually really love Splatoon. Yeah, but it doesn't doesn't have that you know that hitter like God of War is to PlayStation or like what Halo is to Xbox. But let's be it real just, though. I'm, When's the last time Nintendo created that type of hitter? Like that wasn't an IP that they've already had established for years. So not Mario, not Zelda. They don't own Donkey Kong anymore, but you know, we could throw that in there. Like, like when's the last time Nintendo's come out with something new? Like, we can't count Metroid either. Nope. Yeah. And, it's been a long time, man. Right. And, and if they do, do, it's like half ass. You know, it's not like something that they put all their eggs in a basket for. They never really try that hard. At least that's how it comes off, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, I, or I maybe love they're Nintendo. just targeting kids. I don't think they're targeting kids, though. That's the thing. I think Nintendo's, like, market is nostalgia. And that is their lane. And that is where they've stayed for years. And the Switch is... The Switch is a success. It's a success that doesn't fully make sense to me, right? Because it's great. Sure, it's a hybrid console. You can put it into a dock, whatever I have you. I love my Switch. It's like, I think the success of the Switch is the hardware and not as much the software. Breath of the Wild was amazing. Outside of that, Smash is good. But eh, I don't know. Like, Animal Crossing, it it found its niche because of the time frame, I think. I'm I'm not, not, we're not going to get into like a whole argument about uh, Animal Crossing per se, but like, it was a game of the moment and it, it captured that moment and things went really well for it. But, like, all three of those things that... Pokemon's another one, right? All the things that I've mentioned so far are all games that have already... Like, franchises that have already existed. So, therefore, people really flock to them for nostalgia's sake. They haven't released something new and different in so long. They're not, like... In my opinion, they're not innovators anymore. They don't innovate in any meaningful way. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. You know, I remember it got to a point where they're selling cardboard to people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Yo, you're selling the cardboard oh, for eighty dollars. Yo, Bro. that Nintendo Lab stuff—that is wild. But it, it worked for some kids, though. But it, like, it is it wild. Worked. It cost that much. It it oh, it funny. basically. <laughs> all right, this it's a thing that kids use their imagination to do already. Yeah. And they basically gave him like a virtual outlet to do that, and they charged him eighty dollars. Like. And it's yeah. not even like good material. It's cardboard, bro. Yeah, it's. it's <laughs> and then what, what's the other thing they have now? The we we fit, uh, or not? It's not called we fit, but like the ring ring fit. Oh yeah, bro. It's just like some big old circle. You pretend like you drop, bro. Bro. You know what I want them to do, but they'll never do this. Like they literally will never do this. If Nintendo was really trying to be out here, they should take that concept of the Switch, right? But make a gaming cell phone. Like an actual gaming cell phone that you could take with you and have it be your daily driver. And then you can actually come home and your phone on the dock, just like how you used to be able to do with the Switch. And it puts it on your TV. And when you're ready to leave again for the day... Hey, what up, fam? What's going You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what, what? they do. I mean... That's what they do. Have you ever heard of the end gauge? Because that sounds like Yo. the end gauge. <laughs> and that that alone is why I think Nintendo would never do that. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to come up with some kind of new ideas for these dudes, man. They gotta do something. Something. They're complacent too, man. They they got so much money from the Wii. They are getting so much money from the Switch. Uh, They're uh. complacent. Like it's it's what makes these companies, it's what makes Nintendo boring. They are complacent and they're not interested in doing anything different. They're not interested in like being innovative in any meaningful way. They will push out a game, typically a game a year that people fall in love with from a nostalgia standpoint, and they'll rake in their money as far as that goes. But when you really peel back the curtain, like, what are they doing to push gaming forward? They're not doing anything to push gaming forward anymore. So, yeah. Yeah. They would rather come out with, like, Paper Mario 4 or some shit. Or, like, Mario Sunshine or Mario... Every fucking iteration of Mario that you could think of, they'd rather make. 
like that come up recently with it's just been all remastered. Like they just recently brought back the Mario Sunshine with sixty four oh, and golly. um Mario like the planet one, whatever it goes space. But it's like Galaxy. bro, can you bring something new? Like start bringing these old games. Like they just like what they brought back. What Mario Maker Two? What is it? It's just the same game where you just <laughs> but just new maps <laughs> that people built. Yep. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Uh, even even when the Switch first came out, right? A lot of the games that they had released, Mario Kart and Mario Party, they were both Wii U games, right? I Mario think Party so. was a new one, but Mario Kart was from the Wii U. Yeah, and it's like you're charging like sixty bucks still for these games, bro. Like it's crazy how expensive. Nintendo keeps their prices up, and it's, yeah, it's, bro, I agree. Mario Mario Kart Eight has been out for four years plus, and it's still sixty dollars to this day, and it, mm-hmm. it's insane. You should see how they do it with Pokemon, bro. Like, if I go to GameStop right now and I try to buy a used Pokemon game for like the first DS, not even the 3DS, not the Switch, the first DS, that shit's still gonna be about thirty-five, forty, but yeah, mm-hmm. something like that, mm-hmm. yeah. for no reason, and it's yeah. used. Yeah. It's like it's crazy. Yeah, from crazy. From, from experience of working there, Nintendo uh Pokemon games and like Mario games, they tend to hold their value for a very long time. Mm. It's weird. Um yeah. 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 Like the whole sticker be scratching off the front of the game, bro, and it's still still say thirty five dollars. <laughs> like what, bro? I remember. Well, sticker prices Golden don't change. Days. Sticker, sticker prices don't change on Nintendo games, man. Oh, it's, it's wild. Man. They don't have price drops, Bugs. nothing. They're like the Apple of the video oh. game industry. It's weird. It's real weird. Yeah. Definitely. They have like a cult following. They're, yeah, there's stuff. Minus the hardware, yeah. 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 Well, at least, yeah. yeah. At least Apple innovates. <laughs> yeah. But just, just yeah. the idea of it yeah. being like such a cult following and like when you really peel back the curtain, like they're not really the the best per se, but hey. It is what it is. I still have love in my heart for Nintendo. I'm really hoping that they like find that thing where they really like get do something inspirational and new and different. But Man, I just need party chat, fam. Like I told you all that story about how like I be trying to trade Pokemon with folks from like Reddit or whatever, right? I, I had to nickname one of my Pokemon no, and nickname another one of them yes, because when we went to trade, we couldn't talk. So he would show me his mons. And when he put one up there, and I'd be like, nah. So I'd have to throw up the Pokemon I nicknamed No. So that way he knew to switch to another one. And then when it was one that I like, I'd be like, all right, put up yes. They, they go. <laughs> and then that's how we had to communicate in order to make a trade happen. Is that not <laughs> ridiculous? That's hilarious. It's 2020, bro. <laughs> like, get with the I program. That's can't. crazy. The fact that you just I said can't. that. <laughs> that that was the experience you had bro. playing a video game in 2020. That is Nintendo should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> like I know PlayStation took you know a while too before they had party checks, but at least they crazy, did. But at least God, they had the crazy. game chat though, right? Like there was oh, some true, chat. True. Uh, it's it's unacceptable. It really is. That's I need wild. y'all to do better, Nintendo, all around. I just need the others to do better. Please, please, be boy. please, Nintendo, do better. Uh, please do better. Please. That's amazing. Oh, I can't believe that happened yeah. to you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I had to do it. Well, you know, we'll keep an eye out for Nintendo in 2021. Hopefully they'll, uh, they'll surprise <laughs> us. Without it. Actually coming to uh, the 21st century. <laughs> hey, you negative Nancy? Gosh, Goop. Oh, man. Man. Nah, it ain't it, Chief. It ain't it. <laughs> it is what it is. All we can do is wait and see, right? And give them, give them their money if they give us or give them our money if they deserve it. And don't give them anything if they don't, which they haven't been. Uh. So, all right. So we'll jump into the next uh, segment, the final one, actually. Uh, our most anticipated game of the year. So doesn't matter what platform or anything, just a, a general most anticipated game of the year. So Manny... I'll let you get it cracking. You probably already know, but God of War. <laughs> that is my most anticipated game. I've been waiting for the sequel forever. Hey, okay. But uh, yeah, I'll just keep it nice and short. God of War. God of War. He's a little right. Joe Pesci out of nowhere. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> All right. 
Chris, what about you, man? Most anticipated game of 2021. Um, hmm. a good question. Uh, all right, so here's a question because I don't know if it's on the table yet. Clearly, COD comes out with a new game every year. Is this the year that like we get Modern Warfare 2, or is that next year? Because if it's this year, then that's my answer. If it's not, then <laughs> I'm at the cold with something else. This is this I is can't the wait year. For Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, this will be the year where we get Infinity Ward's next game. It probably won't be Modern Warfare 2, but yeah, like this will this is the year of Infinity Ward's next game. <sighs> I want Modern Warfare 2. Um, if it's not that, then. Hmm. <sighs> That's a good question. I guess maybe for me, medium. I just really want to play the game and see what it's about. I'm so enamored with that game and not knowing what it's going to really play like and getting excited every time I see the trailer because it's like, dude, this game looks so foreign. I, I just really want to touch it. I'm praying that it's not going to flop because it, it has high bust potential. All right? It does. Let me put that out there, people. Like, the game looks dope. But, yeah, I've seen games like this before. <laughs> I don't think it was particularly. High bus potential. The, the, I, I don't think it says it's very hyped up. I'm very excited for it. I know a lot of people who are. Obviously, we all are. Um, yeah. I don't think it's too hyped. So I don't know if it like. I don't know. That's one of those tricky ones. Like if it's not good, I don't know if I'd call it a bust. I think it's just like okay, this this was what it was. I don't know. Like yeah. I hear you. I yeah, because I don't think it's like one of those. It's not like Cyberpunk, right? Cyberpunk was so overhyped that like if it, yeah. if it flopped, like it's a bust, right? Um, hmm. but yeah, for me, I'm I'm actually kind of sad nobody said Halo. I'm also not going to say Halo, but uh, <laughs> mine is definitely going to be Resident Evil, Resident Evil Village. If you didn't know, I'm a huge Resident Evil fan, obviously. So this shouldn't come. It's too big of a surprise to anyone. But yeah, Resident Evil Village looks like it's gonna be amazing. I loved playing Resident Evil Three. It was uh my game of the year. If you if you didn't hear the last episode, um. So yeah, Village is seems like it's just gonna be a continuation of Seven, which was already a freaking insane game. Um, scared the shit out of me, and I plan on streaming that. So uh, keep a lookout for that. Watch me be scared shitless playing my favorite game. They had a release date for that? I didn't know it was coming out of this year. It's this year, yeah. It's early this year. I think... Really? I feel like they had said... Like, April or March initially. It may have gotten pushed back, but I know it's it's coming this year. They said it's coming this year. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Wait. So, wait. Perfect Dark doesn't come out this year. They just announced it, but it could still come out past this year. They just announced it, but we don't know when yeah. that's coming. Gotcha. You know, I said it earlier, but now I'm thinking about it. I really wish somebody would redo Black. Black was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an EA title, so I'll that press was X pretty to cool, doubt. man. Nah, yeah. it's never going to happen, but... I man, wouldn't say never, cool. but unlikely. Yeah. Unlikely. You know, I also looking forward to is a Battlefield game. Battlefield, s- yeah, seven. Oh, it'd yeah, be six. six. Six, yeah. Yeah. I was about to get five the other day because everybody talks about five. They all say five is. Well, amazing. if you have Game Pass, it's Game Pass. Yeah, it's in there. I just didn't do it yet, but they're like, if you like big open map fights, play that. Yeah. No, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It better be modern combat though. That's the only thing I really need right now. Like, I'm sick of the World War II stuff. I don't want to go back yeah. into that well. I don't want... Same, World same. War, Like, they did the World War One thing with Battlefield One. Like, that was... That was a miss. That was a huge miss. <laughs> like... That was a miss. You've, you've brought us into this world where we have all these different guns and gadgets and vehicles and yada, yada, yada. Like, you can't, you can't pull us back. It, it just... No. It, mm. it just doesn't work. There's too much stuff like in the now. Too many different things that you can do. Like they just need to yeah. dive head first Definitely. into the modern combat stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm pumped for that. Okay. Do we have any other final games that uh, you're interested in? Nah, ain't definitely not from Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> definitely not. <Open> <laughs> Nintendo, Nintendo, man, they gotta come hard with it. 
Uh, yeah, I'm just waiting to see what else we get. That's 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 it. Right. I want a good racing game too. Let's get a good racing game. Somebody make a good game where I could drive a car, please, please. Well, well maybe the next Forza. Yeah, that the Forza might be it. Isn't for there you. like just Ride Four or some shit like that coming out soon too, right? This month, I believe. That's a that's like a that's a, a motorcycle motorcycle game though. Ah, uh, Dirt I just came out. Dirt Five came out for launch. So. Yeah, I'm not a big dirt person. Yeah, I, if if you want a, a racing game right now, in my opinion, I don't I don't think there's anything other than Forza. And like I think that's kind of the holy grail. Like I think that's the yeah. best racing game out right now, and I really cannot think of anything else that's in the same sphere. Yeah. <sighs> All right, I guess I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting. All right. Well, that concludes the first episode of 2021. Wow! <laughs> Where the confetti at? <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully we, you know, like like we said, we we aspire to have a lot of big things for you this year. Um, hopefully, you know, a couple revamps and whatnot. Definitely gonna try to get a little bit heavier on the Twitch game. Um, hopefully, we're gonna start having episodes live up on Twitch. Uh, but for now, Manny, let the people know where they can find you, bro. You already know. New Year, still the same OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> but uh seriously uh twitch at twitch.tv slash goopmasterflex instagram goopmasterflex underscore ttv twitter goopmasterflex underscore uh you already know how we do that's <laughs> it all right okay okay that was interesting all right chris where, where can people find you bro <laughs> Sorry, that's the way you made that face, man. He was bad for me. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking for your boy, you can find me on everything. M-A-Y-2-5-T-H-X-X. Again, on everything. <laughs> on everything, guys. All right. Also, uh, you know, I'm Black Ice 8. You can find me on t- pretty much everything twitch twitter um xbox steam playstation at black ice 8 um and then on instagram it's black ice 8 underscore gaming all right hey yo fam why you be plugging your steam bro hey man i'm out here man people can play Why why not bro try to play with the with the people man oh wait no yeah you can actually add people on steam yeah bro I, I take that back. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. You take that back. All right, y'all. Enjoy. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna have great things to come in the new year. Until See you guys new year next of week. Gaming. Hey.